Hello, and welcome to our curriculum night. My name is Lisa Pizella, and I am going to be your child science teacher this year. So I normally like to start this night off with a little bit about myself. Um, so to share with you, my, this is now my seventh year teaching at Islander Middle School, and it's very hard to believe that I'm saying this next part, but I have been teaching middle school for 15 years now, going on my 16th this year. Um, and over the years, some of you may have heard my backstory already because I was so happy to see that I have so many siblings in my classes this year. Um, but of course, there are also many new families that I'm super excited to meet. So about me, um, I am originally from the East Coast and my family is from New Jersey. But years ago, my parents made the decision to leave the snow behind and go down to Florida. So that's where I was born and raised. Um, but then when, when I was in high school, my dad's job took us up to Alabama and I ended up sticking around there for a little while. So it was there that I went to college and started teaching in 2005. Um, a few years after that, I met my now husband and we made the move out here to Seattle seven years ago. Um, I can say that although we miss Alabama football this time of year, we definitely are loving it up here in the Northwest. Um, we love to travel often, but of course, that's something we have been missing right now. Um, but we also love to go hiking a lot, which is a little easier to do in these days. And we have a sweet Labradoodle dog uh, who always enjoys coming along with us to do that. Um, getting into a little bit about our class. So here at Islander, eighth grade science is earth science. And we start our year learning about energy. Um, and then we apply that concept throughout the year as we study all areas of the earth. So once we finish with our energy unit this year, we're going to begin our studies with a look at earth in space. In this unit, we primarily focus on seasons and gravity and beyond the earth and look at astronomy. Um, after that, we move into a unit on weather and storms followed by plate tectonics and earthquakes, volcanoes and rocks, geologic time, and then we will wrap up the end of the year with natural resources. Here I have a little about the goals of our class. One of the biggest hopes I have every year is that um, our class will awaken every student's curiosity about the world around us. And secondly, um, my goal is to improve problem solving skills that will set students up for success in all aspects of life beyond the classroom. And finally, a third goal that we have been working on really hard in eighth grade science is to put emphasis on learning as a community. So students will work together throughout the year during each unit in order to develop questions from observations, plan and conduct investigations, analyze and interpret data, and then engage in discussions together in order to answer questions based on the evidence that they have collected. The way that we go about meeting those goals is by using teaching strategies that are based on NGSS or Next Generation Science Standard principles. Um, and this type of teaching style is much more student centered rather than being teacher led. So I mentioned in my welcome email that instruction in an NGSS classroom is very different from what we experienced when we were all in school. So gone are the days of taking notes and memorizing random facts from a textbook. Lessons now are driven by students and their questions and learning happens through their own exploration and evidence that they gather in order to be able to make claims. Um, over the last couple of years, myself and the other eighth grade science teachers have developed a process of introducing new units by having students first start out by observing an interesting phenomenon and then they develop a model to share their initial ideas about it and then ask us questions. So we use those questions and their ideas to develop activities that can allow them to correct misconceptions and also gain new information. And all of this without me simply just giving them an answer. Um, so this process, it can be a challenge at first for many of our students, but it's a good struggle 
for them to have because it really develops their ability to become problem solvers and more independent learners. So not only do we focus on developing these science process skills in our class, but over the last several years, we have continued to add engineering challenge projects along the way so that we can practice those skills too. Um, I can definitely say that this has been a highlight for many of our eighth graders. And although we're at home right now, we do aim to continue adding these type of projects into our lessons. And in fact, there's gonna be a fun one coming up soon at the end of our energy unit. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, here's a little bit about our materials that will be needed. So um, first on the list, I have what we call our field notebook. And for some handwritten tasks or doing things like going outdoors, uh, we utilize a field notebook. And this is something that we have already set up and started using during our first couple of weeks in class. Um, second, during Zoom meetings, it's going to be important that they have a charged iPad or another device uh, and also something to write with nearby. And then some weeks uh, we may require other household items that would be needed to complete various modeling tasks or projects. So whenever this comes up, these things will be listed on the week at a glance document, along with alternate options of items that could be used because we're really striving to try and make things or make use of things rather that you already have rather than have to go out and purchase new items. Um, so if at some point your child is having trouble coming up with something to use, please have them reach out to me and I can help them brainstorm. Uh, next, in regards to grading. So over the last couple of years, I have been studying standards-based grading and started to modify my grading practice in order to fit this philosophy on grading. Um, and this year for my science classes, I am going to be fully adopting this system. So some of you might be familiar with this because we had some teachers pilot a trial program for standards based last year. Um, but if you have not seen this before, the biggest, most notable change in this practice, I would say, is that one, anything that's being graded is only going to assess for proficiency on a learning standard. And second, the grades are reported on a one through four scale. So for science, this means that we are going to focus on reporting proficiency, excuse me, um, for the disciplinary core ideas, or in other words, the content standards, as well as science and engineering practices, which are all part of our NGSS standards. Um, it's also important for you to know that you should ignore any percentages that you see in Skyward. Uh, in standards-based grading, a three does not mean a three out of four, which in traditional grades would be a 75% or a C, but instead a three is where we want kids to be. A three means that a student has met the standard for their grade level. A two would mean that they're almost there, and a one would mean that more practice is still needed. A four, if we look at the top end of the scale, would mean that a student has reached above and beyond the required standard. And I am going to be stressing to students that perfection does not mean getting a four. A four may be really difficult to achieve, um, and it's not where I would expect the majority of scores to fall. Another thing with standards-based grading is that assignments are going to always fall within one of these two categories. So formative is anything that is being done for practice and therefore it will be reported to you in Skyward, but it will be marked as a no count in the grade book um, because practice items will not factor into their overall grade for the class. Then we have summative. So after we have practiced after they've had multiple opportunities to try a skill, a summative grade would be counted and factored into their current course grade. 
and what this is going to look like in Skyward for you. Um, so you'll see these two categories and with any kind of formative or practice tasks, they may appear in one of two ways. So some formative tasks, you'll see a check mark. And I will do this for some of our asynchronous work um, as a way just to let you know if an assignment has been turned in or not. So alternatively, rather than having the check mark, it might be marked as missing. On the other hand, if you see a formative grade with a 4321, uh, that means that it was something that, although practice, I did grade it in order to provide the kids with feedback on their level of mastery for that skill. Summative, on the other hand, as I mentioned, is after we have practiced. So this might be in the form of a quiz or a test or a project, and these 4321s will be what counts as um, determining their current course grade. So all information on grades and assignments is going to be communicated through these two platforms. Um, Schoology is primarily for communicating with the students, and this is where weekly tasks will be posted on a week at a glance document, which I will speak in more detail about in just a moment. Also, all of their assignment due dates will show up on the calendar here in Schoology. Um, and last, whenever they are required to make a submission on Schoology for an assignment, I will add comments in Schoology to provide them with feedback when that's appropriate. Uh, next up, when it comes to organizing their daily work, um, because we primarily complete most of our tasks on Google Docs, I recommend that students organize their work digitally with Google Drive folders. And I am going to be teaching them how to set that up this week if they don't already know. Uh, however, I do always have some students that prefer to do their work old school style on paper with pencil. And so they are, of course, more than welcome to do that by printing out any of the docs and then organize them into a binder that would be dedicated just for their science class. Um, the one thing about doing this, they're going to have to take the additional step of either scanning or taking a, a readable photo um, in order to submit that task when it's necessary. And finally, I wanted to just share with you about the organization of our week at a glance. So this document will be posted in Schoology each Monday morning. And the beauty of how we have been using this as a science department since last year is that once the student gets this document, there is nowhere else that they have to go in order to get what they need for their work that week. Um, so you can see that the top of the document contains links to get to our Zoom meetings. Also, there's a list of any materials that they would need for the week, as well as the learning standards that we are working on and specific goals that we have for that week. Then when we look at the bottom in the table, the gray rows list out what we are going to do during our synchronous time. So basically, that means it's an agenda of what we're going to be doing together during our Zoom meetings. The white rows list the asynchronous tasks. So this means the homework or the assignments that they will work on during their afternoon time. Um, if you notice in each task, there is a blue hyperlink. So this means that there's no need to go back to Schoology to get the assignment. All they need to do is click that link, which will take them right to the work and a full set of directions will be on the item that it opens. Then over to the far right column, we have detailed if they need to submit those tasks or not, and also what and where the submission will be. So in closing, uh, I know that we're all still learning to work our way through this new normal of school at the moment, uh, but if your child finds that they're continuing to have trouble, um, I have some suggestions here that might help. Uh, one thing might be going through this week at a glance document with them at the beginning of the week, and that is something that I will also be doing with them during our Monday sessions together. Um, also encourage them to pop in during office hours with me anytime that they have questions. I am here to help them with anything that they need. 
So thank you all so much for watching this video. And I want you to know that I always welcome you to reach out if you have any questions and I will be looking forward to a great year.